Hello, welcome to Portal's portfolio series where we have readings and interviews with student writers and published authors from Vancouver Island University and around the country. We talk to them about what it takes to be a writer in the ever-changing world of publishing. Today, our guest is Robert Bowerman. Robert, would you care to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure, uh, Keshu. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I think this is a great idea to uh, have uh, different people share their work from VIU. Uh, it's always hard for people to find a, a venue. So uh, kudos to you guys. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Robert Bowerman. I'm retired. I'm over 70. Uh, I take part-time courses at uh, VIU, and I've been uh, writing off and on uh, for a few years now. Whereabouts on the island are you from? Uh, I'm not from uh, the island. I'm originally from Toronto, and oh, okay. uh, I spent 30 years in uh, Whitehorse. Oh, nice. Oh, that's right. I remember from class now. That's right. Um, so uh, let's get started with the, the interview here. Um, would you say that you come from a literary background? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, my father was a proofreader and a writer. Uh, now, he never published anything, but to me, anybody who writes uh, consistently, whether or not he gets published, is a writer. Uh, so I, I, I call him a writer. So uh, I imagine that uh, as a, a young man and a, a boy even, did you begin writing around then? Yes. Um, well, I wrote uh, when I was 10 years old, uh, I see one of the questions is, when did you get first published? And I got first published when I was 10. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well, don't get uh, too excited because it was uh, 50 years later that I got my next uh, publication. <laughs> well, that, uh, that leads to actually another question um, that we have, which is, uh, how often would you say that rejection happens when you submit? A lot. I think that if you're going to be a writer, you just have to accept it as a fact of life. Uh, I have uh, an acceptance rate of something like 5%. That's one in 20. I have at least 100 rejections. Wow. Well, the stats, uh, I'm sure, seem daunting. But, you know, I've, I've heard very similar things from other professional writers that say getting started was sort of the hardest part of just feeling the kind of the blow of rejection at first. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, five uh, percent, according to my tracker, is actually above average in acceptance. So that gives you it gives you an idea of what's going on. I mean, if you don't have a, a, an established name, it's going to be a lot harder. Mm -hmm. But I think I think uh, writers and emerging writers in particular have to take encouragement where they can get get it. So a number of times I've received personal rejections rather than form rejections. So the editor has taken the time to read my work, give me a few comments, some feedback. It means that he thinks there's potential there. And I think that when you get something like that, you'd say, okay, that means something. You, you mentioned that you were living in Whitehorse and I recall from our classes that, uh, that you were writing a piece that also took place in Whitehorse. Would you say that a lot of your pieces develop from uh, your environments that you've been in or your life experiences? Uh, yeah, it's, well, that one in particular, because I lived a long time at Whitehorse, although most of my pieces aren't uh, located there but uh, you know in 70 years you'd be in a lot of different places so uh, I've traveled in a lot of places and a lot of my pieces re uh, reflect that. Nice. Would you uh, care to read us uh, an excerpt from something that, that you have published or not? Yeah sure uh, all of these pieces have been published um, they're all poems of one sort or another uh, the first one is called Shopping Cart, and it's um, based on an observation that I had while I was waiting for a bus going up to VIU, actually. It's called Shopping Cart. A powerful push, metal and rubber rumble and clatter on pavement. Faster and faster, his long black jacket flaps in the wind and flows behind him like a cape. He runs a red, his life balanced on the back edge of his chariot, stuffed with everything he owns. Uh, that's it. Powerful piece really truly speaks to a, a social problem here in Nanaimo. Yes, yes, it's something you see all the time. And mm -hmm. uh, the image was right in front of me and I had to write about it. Very nice. Do you have another you'd like to share? 
Uh, sure. This one is called fullness. Um, it's something I observed when I got up early in the morning. It's uh, very short. Fullness, the still of the night, loud with a silver brightness, and I too am full. Wow. It's, a, it, it's a haiku, of course. Yeah, it's impactful, powerful. I like that one. I like that a lot. Um, when uh, when writing, does would you say that it just comes to you, or is there a process that uh, has become tried and true for you? It really depends. Uh, the uh, two short poems here actually did come to me, uh, in a sense, because a shopping cart, as soon as I saw it in front of me, while I was waiting for the bus, I knew I would be writing about it. And then it was a, place, a case of playing around with it. I maybe spent uh, two hours total time writing this. And, and of course, I got some feedback from workshops, which always helps. Mm -hmm. And then I came up with this, and, uh, and and I was fortunate it was actually published. Do you um, do you often show your your works in progress to uh, your peers or friends? Well, uh, there's the sharing in the workshops, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the pieces that I've written have been shared in a workshop of some kind or another. I have joined. Uh, I have a little writing group going uh, going on. And that's, those are quite helpful, particularly if you're with people that take it fairly seriously. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they're not just um, casual about their comments, if you know what I mean. I mean, if somebody says, oh, that's great, that's not particularly helpful, if you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> what, you, what you want is something that's more precise and more constructive, and they get right into the nitty gritty of your piece. You want a careful reader, uh, but not somebody who's going to be, you know, brutal or anything like that. Uh, so I have found such a group, which is good. And sometimes I show my wife uh, pieces that I've written as well. Would you have any advice as to what it means to be a careful reader? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, reading aloud helps. Reading the person's piece aloud, particularly in poetry, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, because there's the whole question of rhythm and all that sort of stuff. Um, reading it more than once not reading it on a tablet or the computer, actually printing it out and then, you know, um, making uh, notations with a pen or whatever. I think that's helpful. And, and I do that whenever I work, uh, workshop somebody else's work, I always print it out. And most of the time I read it aloud, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with some exceptions. I mean, uh, I'm talking about pieces that I think are going somewhere. If I, if I get a piece and I think that there's not much hope for it, I probably won't do as much work. That's just the nature of things. And usually you can tell. I mean, different people are at different levels, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, whenever I see something that, that strikes me, I'm going to take some time. And usually usually most pieces have some potential. Gabriel, do you have any questions for our guest? Questions myself. Well, I just um, kind of noticed that um, the last two poems that you um, just gave us, um, they're like, as you were reading it, I was picturing it. So it's kind of, it was kind of like a very small scene, but it was so vivid with imagery. How do you um, approach um, poems when you try to write them? Do you, do you lean very heavily on the imagery or do you um, have like um, other elements that you like to use as well? It depends on the poem. Um, sometimes certain poems lend themselves to imagery. Uh, the second poem, uh, of course, is the image of a full moon and and that is just a, an image and the same with the first one we have that something that was right in front of me so i'm mm -hmm. just describing it but i also write a lot of uh um narrative poetry and short stories and, I, and the next poem that i can read for you is in fact a narrative which uh, I'll, I'll read Ooh. for you if, yes please if, if you like i'll read it for yes, you. yes 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 please <laughs> <laughs> this one is called on the way to port hardy the cops are there to see him off. Are you going to be all right? Is anybody waiting for you on the other side? A female constable asks. I move away so I can't hear. You can see he's a mess. One hand holding up his trousers, in the other a half open duffel bag crammed with clothes. He's four sheets to the wind and it looks like the slightest breeze will blow him right away. On the ferry from Alert Bay, he corners me and tells me his girls left him. 
that they'd been together for four years and that he doesn't know what he's going to do. And can I give him a ride? I'm not so keen, but I've stood where he's standing now and I can't say no. He shows me his red and black button blanket that's missing one, blank, one button and tells me he owns a fishing boat and that he's a hereditary chief. And maybe it's true, though he seems a little young. When I, when I ask him, he tells me he doesn't know what happened to his belt. And I wonder if the cops took it away from him when he was inside and didn't give it back. On the way up, I go as fast as I can. It's only 40 minutes, but I figure I can make it in 30. The headlights bounce off the fog and soft rain builds to where I have to turn on the wipers. He tells me he feels sick and I tell him to put his head between his knees and to keep, and to take deep breaths and let me know if he's going to puke. But he says he's not that kind of sick. And I know what he means because I have felt the same way. Am I going to be okay? Am I going to be, be okay? He asks over and over. And I don't know what to say because I wasn't. Later he sings and I join in because I know the song and it seems like the right thing to do. Then he asked me to, then he asked me if I can buy him a Mickey and I say no, that it won't help. I know, I tried that and it didn't. To take our minds off things, I ask him about fishing. He says he fishes for halibut and explains that he does it with a long line with many hooks and that he likes being out on the water because it's quiet and he can, and he can think better there. And I wonder if I should try that sometime. But I, know I, but I know I won't. He asked to be let off at a, at a mall on the outskirts of Port Hardy. And I wonder if he'll be safe. But he says that he's, there's only his uncle and that they don't get along. It's late, which means nothing's open except the cop shop and that feels all wrong. So I let him out. We shake hands and then we hug. We hang on to each other and neither of us wants to let go. As I drive away, I see a group come towards him. I cut the engine and roll down the window so I can hear. And someone says, where have you been? Are you back for good now? And everybody laughs and pats him on the back and I think that everything will be okay after all. From behind the group, a young woman with a pixie haircut, tattoos and a jean jacket runs and then jumps and throws his arm, then throws her arm around him. And her thighs straddle his waist and I'm a little jealous as I drive off. That's it. <laughs> that was an awesome poem. Wow. Um, so I've seen you go through the narrative ones, the uh, haiku ones. Um, is there any particular style of poetry that you prefer writing? In? Uh, I know, not necessarily. I mean, it just sort of depends on what, what comes up. I think certain types of poems lend themselves to better approaches. This particular poem is based on an actual event, right? This actually happened. So again, it was fairly fairly easy to write, which isn't always the case with, with stuff that I write. You know, there, there was only, I think, two drafts in this one. And this one was, to, oh, sorry, I keep jumping in thinking you're done. Please continue. Uh, yeah, and I, I was fortunate that this one was accepted as well as for publication. I like uh, this one because um, it shows how one's um, preconceptions are often wrong. Right, and, uh, I mean, I'm describing how I actually felt at the time, right? Mm -hmm. So I was quite leery about picking this person up. I think that comes across fairly clearly in the poem, but it was very rewarding to actually do so. And I think that that's something I'm, I'm, I think that I want to, to get across in the poem. Um, and because often there is shared experiences even across cultures, right? So yeah. what had happened to him had, had happened to me. I think that comes clear, comes through clearly in the poem. Yeah, heartbreak seems to be kind of like an across the board kind of thing for everybody. It's a human experience. Um, do you have any more questions, Keisu? Um Yeah, I've got a couple, uh, at least one more. Uh, one more. I wanted to say thank you, though, for um that last poem is quite powerful and i have a lot of family in alert bay and uh the the image of, of the narrative that you told i've i've seen and and i just wanted to to thank you for for referencing that place it's a home to me and uh it's, it's nice to hear in in poetry about it so that and that was the first for me to hear about alert bay in, in a poem oh it's somewhere it, it is it is somewhere special mm -hmm. Um, 
Uh, one, uh, another question for you would be, is there any projects that you're currently working on? Well, you may remember that I was writing that uh, mystery slash Western when I was in that class. Yes. That's, still, that's still going on. I'm up to 50,000 words and I got at right. least I got at least 50,000 more to go for my first draft. So I don't know how that's going to pan out. But I'm still the, uh, the man in the hat. That's right. The man, yes. the man in the black hat. Yeah. Yes. The black hat. That's right. Yeah, that was, and, a, that uh, was a favorite of the workshops that we did. I, I really enjoyed reading it. Yeah, I'm still um, beavering away at the, on that one. I, I've sort of let it slide because I'm doing this poetry class with Robert uh, uh, Robert Hillis, and there's a lot of long, a lot of work, a lot of long poems. So that's on the back burner. I'm going to try and uh, revise a short story that I've written and send it into the CBC Literary Contest. I've got two days to do it, but but on the other hand, the story has actually been written. Mm -hmm. I know it's not bad because I've gotten comments from editors on it. So I'm going to see if I can um, bring it up a few levels and then I'll uh, send it in and see how it goes. Well, we wish you best of luck on that. Yeah, I'll need it. <laughs> There's only a few thousand people uh, that uh, submit to that. But, uh, you know, the, I, my view is that you've got to just try everything, you know. And just uh, sometimes it's more about the process than the result. If you know what I mean. So, yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. Do you have any um, last remarks you'd like to get in before we conclude this interview? Uh, not really, just to say thanks. I think this is a great idea that you guys are mm. doing. And uh, I will, if you guys let me know, I will listen to other uh, interviews with other students. Absolutely. Uh, sure yeah. thing. We're working mm. on them right now. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a wonderful idea, and it's very difficult for emerging writers to find a space to express themselves and and so on. And this is obviously going to be one. So uh, thanks, mm -hmm. guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you for doing this for us. It's really it really means a lot to us. Oh, it mm -hmm. was fun. Thanks very much. Yeah, Cheers. yeah. I'll just I'll just ring off now. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for coming. And this has been Portal Magazine's podcast with Robert Bowerman. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching the Portal Portfolio Series. Portal is a literary magazine published by the students of Vancouver Island University's Creative Writing and Journalism Department in the traditional territories of the Snenemo, the Cowetson, and the Tla'am and First Nations. For more information about Portal and our portfolio series, please visit portalmagazine.ca.